All right. Uh, hey, everybody. It's Ricky here again, and I'm with uh, my friend Michael Casey, uh, the original Magic Mike. Um, the original. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things I like to do just as a fun little exercise, Mike, do you remember how we met? Oh, man. It would have definitely been a show. It was. I actually remember where we met. Was it Death of False Hope? It was before Death of False Hope. Yes, before Death of False Hope. God, I've known you for too long, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. The problem. Uh, <laughs> it was at a show. It was in a Durham show. Uh, yeah. It was a red collar show. Oh, my God. Wow. We've known yeah. each other that long. We've known yeah. each other red collar long. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yep. You know what? Now that you're mentioning it. Yeah. I do remember that. Um, and then, um, was it the pinhook or was it the one? No, it wasn't the pinhook. It was, um, they were doing shows like out of pocket of like yeah. normal, normal Durham stuff. And there was like a brewery for one show. I don't remember which show it was. I just remember you, you, uh, <laughs> you, uh, Jay, I'm pretty sure Jay or Scotty introduced us. Uh, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then uh, and then you uh, performed at our wedding, sort of. I did, sort of. Yeah, sort of. I, but I had broken my arm right before. Yeah. God, dude, uh, you know how old I was when I broke my arm when I was thirty-eight years old. I'm I'm turning forty-nine this year. Yeah, that was uh, we've. That's one of the things I'm realizing is, boy, I've known people a really long time. <laughs> I, you know, I'm liking it though. Like honestly, because like I was, I was. Uh, I was seeing this one girl a while back and uh, I was like, oh, I got to go see these people. They're like my friends. I've known them for like eight or nine years. And she was like, you've known everybody for eight or nine years. She was also a bitch. But like, um, I was like, actually, that's probably when I started like, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15 years ago is when I actually started kind of coming out of a thing and, and engaging in the community. So yeah, it was like, yeah. But then all those friendships like this one has lasted for you know, the better part of, you know, what, 2008, 2007, yeah. like yeah. a long time. Yeah. And I, that's a, it's fun to look, it, it's actually kind of fun. One of the things I've really enjoyed in doing this is uh, just getting to see, Hey, where we started and where we are now. Cause obviously mm -hmm. we're not done, but uh, I mean, your wedding story is one of my favorites uh, <laughs> because you, you reached out to me uh what like it was like a week before it, it might not have been that long but it was it was summer you're like i'm not sure if i can uh do the wedding and my wife had a because <laughs> you were emceeing our wedding but you yeah. were also uh gonna you, perform magic yeah and uh um and you were just saying no no i can't perform magic i broke my arm and adrian was just like oh thank god <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, but, uh, it was funny. that was a wild time because uh, I, and, you know, I just got back from Highwater Music Fest down in Charleston, which is uh, Shovels and Ropes um, mm. uh, Music Festival. And what year you got married, then that would have been like. Uh, it was 11 years ago. So 11 years ago. So, um, uh, you know, Shovels and Rope has this Highwater Music Fest. But 11 years ago, I actually opened Shovels and Rope's record release in Charleston uh, nice. Courthouse. Right. Nice. And that was the very first record. And it, you know, took them to where they are now. But they called me and they were like, Hey, can you open this show? I was like, Yeah. And I was just having this like time. I was back in the skateboarding. I was like, you know, 37, 38 <laughs> years old. And I'm just like, I just opened this record release. I'm back home. I'm skateboarding. I'm gonna do your wedding and then skateboarding and just had a dumb fall. And then like literally my 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 arm was just like jacked. And it was uh existential good times i'll tell you what mm. you did a no. wonderful job uh though in, in spite of uh not having the magic um yeah <laughs> uh, you brought a different kind of magic so uh, yeah you know i was still honored to be there yeah it, it was it was great uh and we had really hadn't known you that long uh uh and and i guess you know thankfully this friendship has endured a, a long time so yeah and through um, a lot um so you 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 talked about this you were coming out of your shell and mm -hmm. uh you just talked about how you opened up for shovels and ropes so uh for those that don't know who you are um what and <laughs> what is your kind of a passion project oh uh, my passion project i guess you know i guess what started off as a passion project i guess has turned into 
a, a, a strangely remarkable career in some way. <laughs> like, um, I'm a magician, uh, yeah. primarily close up, but I do all forms of magic. And I think I started it, oh God, probably, I mean, I've been professional since 2004. That was my first like hired magic job, but I've been yeah. doing it for some time before that, actually many years before that so it's been about 27 years um and then my daughter was born and then that got me out in front of people because i was just kind of doing it from myself mm -hmm. and you know friends and family and stuff and then people would see it and go wow you're really really good and i was like no because you know i held myself to this really uh unreasonably high standard and then as we all do right <laughs> as we all do, yeah and it was kind of like getting in your own way you know yeah and then um yeah, I started performing out and then slowly but surely, probably by the time we met, I was moving. I was moving. I, I, just, I just love music so much. So like I was always out seeing music. So seeing bands like Shovels and Rope, seeing Red Collars, seeing Lucero, seeing, you know, anybody I thought was interesting at all and going to the shows. And as you remember, there wouldn't be about like 10 or 15 yeah. people at the show or what are these shows, even Shovels and Rope. I saw Shovels and Rope at Slims at least three times to like six people. Yeah. And now people were like, oh my God, like, you know them? And I was like, yeah, you could have known them too. But yeah, you know, it didn't take you know, much. Yeah, it ain't. It just was literally a small amount of time commitment and paying attention. Yeah. And yeah, now that's turned into, you know, I've been out with Flog and Molly on their cruise. I'm going out for a third went out with the old 97s for 40 sand to take me I, on tour. I lost you for a second there. Um, you said, oh, that uh, glitch. Uh, yeah, you were talking about um, you went out with uh, Flogging Molly. For, this is your third time going out on a uh, cruise with them? Yeah, on a cruise with them. And then uh, old 97s, I did like 45 dates with them over two years. And then, um, you know, I've opened for the War on Drugs in Philadelphia. Since then, I got pro uh, proposed by Chris Stapleton to do his stuff. So, it's been pretty interesting to kind of have this like thing that, like you said, it's a passion project, but like people pay so much attention to it because it's so novel, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Why. Maybe, well, it's I, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, it, as a, an observer, right. Watching your journey mm -hmm. um, and some of the people that like, you know, you were just with Lana Del Rey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, how, it, how what is that like for you to just i mean i think the the one obviously the landmark thing was the nicole kidman birthday party right that was kind of the yeah that that, that definitely blown. like uh step me into a new it was uh it was cheryl crow's birthday cheryl crow that's right sorry i remember nicole i remember the, the guest list not the uh particular yeah, yeah and i think that was probably like 2014 is mm -hmm. when that really like came into like uh how do you say like a really big thing but even before then i had been doing it really consistently it was just like yeah now it was starting to kind of spread into other people and then i was like um a, a name that other a story other celebrities and other like stars i loved like kind of told each other you know um uh yeah uh, let's see uh one second um and then um so that has been, to me, has been the remarkable part. And I guess for some reason, like, I've been able to evolve with it. And, like, there was a point, like, probably when you met me, there was, like, me. And then there was, like, the magic me. And I guess there's still that. But then at a certain point, like, my magic and, really, you know, like, your music, it just starts coming out of you. And then you don't know yeah. which is which anymore. Yeah. But like I'm there now. Like I don't know which one is which anymore. It's just like, oh yeah, I'm doing that, and I'm also capable of doing this, and you know, and they're really one in the same like thing, or they come from the same well, if you yeah. will. But, but yeah, Lana Del Rey was a surprise. Uh, Orville Peck. Uh, I did. I got to meet Guster this weekend. Wow. I love Guster. And was we, that Barrel of a Gun? Right? Wasn't that their hit? Uh. uh Amsterdam. Okay. 
It would I, re- like I remember I got them on one of those uh, back when CD samplers were a thing. Oh yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. I was introduced to Guster was through a CD sampler. So. Yeah, I had I had heard this song Amsterdam. I was in love, and it was like never saw them before this weekend. You know, they've been around for you know twenty years or something, but it was just like so excited to see them in the lineup. You know, I got to see Wilco and, and Beck, and um, sh- obviously Shovels and Rope, um, and then just you know kind of be part of this thing that i think was mm, fraught with a lot of people being like this is dumb i don't know if it belongs here kind of thing of course (laughs) uh uh, music fans are nothing if not exclusionary right oh Uh, my god the worst the the worst and then like i had so many people tell me that it was stupid and it would never work um and it was kind of dumb and uh, and now I'm like, oh, your band still plays the cave, and I've opened up for the World Drugs at the Fillmore on New Year's Eve. Yeah, like, yeah. Which one of these is dumb? You know, I don't know. Not to be like, you know, BDE or anything. Just, like, no, <laughs> it's just like, I, well, I think there, there is. Uh, you, I would say you are a magician, but you very much exist in the music world. Like it, yes. to me, you are a a musician whose instrument is magic, uh, which is. Uh, I, maybe that's silly, but uh, no, uh, I, that's where I see you. And uh, man, just anybody who's been in a band can tell you how much of that is <laughs> so catty and negative and like <laughs> combative for no reason. Uh, for no reason, I you know, I, I thought about it, I guess, when I was doing it. Uh, one of the first bands I ever performed for it was Drive By Truckers back in wow. The- when Decoration Day came out, actually, yeah. one of the first bands I performed for, and I was so nervous about it because I loved them so much. And this is what, like, two thousand three or two thousand four or something. Yeah. And I was just like, I've got the special gift, you know. And uh, I was, uh, I wasn't even pretentious about. It. I just didn't know how it would land because I hadn't really done that many performances yeah. at that point for other people, and and they loved it. And it's like, and then the next was Lucero, and the next was like. Uh, you know each one of these bands and then you got to be this um ghost story that other bands told other bands about yeah when they were coming i'll be like oh my god does that did that guy come to your show and now pe- people seek me out so like as they're coming to town and in the uh, legend or whatever you want to say is grown up around it like i got to do last year i got to do um bruce dickinson from iron maiden i saw that i <laughs> i was incredibly jealous of that i love iron maiden so Shit, I was jealous. I was like, wow, this is what it's come to. Like, it's like and that, and I got paid to do that. So it was like really weird. And I was the yeah. only guest of yeah. Bruce Dickinson. It, it feels like you're stealing, right? Uh, you're yeah, get- yeah. Oh, absolutely does. 100%. You're like, wow, I get paid and oh, wow, okay, no, that's good. But I, I try to think about it as like, that's how people, you know, pay their respect to your art form. Yeah, yeah. You know? um and most of the time i have a very sliding scale for like you know rich people it's like up here sure like, sure here. um i just like performing and connecting with people i think more than anything else and now it's got i know you haven't seen it in a while but like now it's so much more connected. I, I mean i i can't i i need to, we need to see it's been pre-pandemic i think since we've seen each other it feels like yeah so been, and it all changed for me in the pandemic too, right? So like I did a really big like directional shift where I realized like in the pandemic, the reason I did it was this in-person um, camaraderie and these mm-hmm. these actual physical moments that only the people in the moment were experiencing. Because I've had people come back later and talk about tricks I just don't even do anymore, but they remember it so fondly. So now yeah. that's just theirs, you know, and it's mine. I just remember the, how it ended. And I think, you know, when I went to pandemic, I was trying to do stuff online, but the world was a nightmare, still is. And um, <laughs> yeah. and I think, you know, it was actually kind of a function of, you know, uh, that app that tells you your friends are racist. Well, yeah. What did Chris Rock yeah. call that Facebook? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was function of Facebook. And I'm like, oh, wow, people I like are like huge pieces of racist shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't actually want to distract anyone from this moment of yeah. you know, the world's ending. Um, 
police are killing people and whatever. And so I took this huge, like year and a half long break where I didn't actually touch cards the entire pandemic. I thought about magic, but I didn't miss any for like a year and a half. And actually my first show out of the pandemic was off with their heads tour (laughs) at the 506. They asked me to open up Uh. legend only. They're like, we've been hearing about you for years. We're coming through. We want you to open for us. And I was like, absolutely. I've been hearing about you guys for years. I'm going to do it. So uh, Ryan and I met through Lindsay and um, and what, the rest of history. What was it like for you? What was it like? You said you took a year and a half off. What What was your relationship with magic like in that time? I was trying to figure out why I liked it so much or why people liked it so much. It was a, something I didn't really give thought to. I just was like, it's good and I like it and people like it. And that's just kind of where it went. But then it really turned into this exercise of why, like, you know, this, why, why, why am I this way? Why do I like this? And and what does it really mean to me? Right. And, and then I kind of like dropped a lot of really trite things that I not trite or, or refashioned them to try to find more meaning out of it. So my front to back show is now a lot more, metaphysical it's a lot more um theoretical physics or uh uh, buddhist constructs just kind of delivered in this really weird magical package where i kind of remind everybody where we are in a moment in time and it's really fun it's really really fun all i did was watch like midnight gospel and rick and morty and like (laughs) all these bending like yeah. sh- that really kind of show you that part of life in yeah. some ways. and then i wanted to kind of incorporate it so like you know i watched this documentary origami and they talked about mm, paper having memory and if you crease a piece of paper it just always has a grease in it and that fascinated me and they're like even if you iron it out the paper still has a crease like the paper holds memory yeah. when i thought about it, it's like it also holds memory of like words you put on it and all these things so like paper, paper being this trapping of memory and then i started backing that up into like well paper was a tree and a tree was water and air and soil and sunshine and before that it was like you know so you get real heady really fast when yeah. you just look at a pack of cards and it's all these things that you just take for granted but they're all existing simultaneously on some end of some kind of spectrum <laughs> of life <laughs> so yeah there's where i am ricky i'm really heady now <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's i mean you know one of the things that i think is great about art and i i do think what you do is artistry uh you know i'm mm-hmm. sure Thank there's you. some people that don't uh but there's always jerks everywhere uh but right like especially in the world we exist in right in alternative music art uh mm-hmm. it, it, we're, we're trying to say something right like that's yeah. the whole purpose of this is there is uh, more to say and so what what's the reception been like for you it, taking the, your magic into a more philosophical route i guess i'll say oh man you know it's still fun it's not like uh you know hard you know <laughs> philosophy 406 or something it, it's definitely like It's like, um, here's some magic, and I've painted this Trojan horse up with magic to drop a kind of a a moment on you where I let you take everything for granted, and then I turn everything, including reality, on its ear some ways where it also makes it more impossible, right? And so, like, I open now with probably like a two or three minute speech just about cards, and I, I don't even do any magic. I do zero magic. I just literally talk about every aspect of the cards. And when I spread them on the table, people, one common thing is people go, wow, they come like that. It's like, cause most people buy one pack of cards, two packs of cards in their whole life and they've never opened them again. Yeah. And some people recognize that. And then it's actually set up in this uh, perfect, it's set up in this order where it's, um, I don't remember. It's like hearts, clubs, uh, or hearts, clubs diamond spades yeah hearts clubs diamond spades and if you oh look at that and if you look at a brand new pack of cards it's a mirror image of itself 
I, I'm and checking. Oh. I'm not sure if I've used this deck or not yet. So I was, I'm, uh, oh no, all my decks of cards are used. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Most people are, you know, but <laughs> yeah, they're really cool. They're mirror image. So there's aces on the top and the bottom and the second ah. card on the top and the bottom. And they go all the way to the middle to what they call the kissing kings, um, where the two kings are in the middle. So like the king of clubs and the king of diamonds are touching. And then like that got me down during the pandemic, like where did cards come from? So now I'm like, trying to get to the history of playing cards which nobody knows you know yeah what that means because no one knows where they came from and you can look it up as much as you want that's just the thing and there's all these like numerical constructs like you know what did i say like you know there's 13 cards in every suit there's 13 yeah. phases of the moon and, and the cards go from dark 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 to light to dark to light again and if huh. you think that is like these phases yeah and it's like 12 cards with pictures and there's um you know 12 months and every month is about you know every season is about three months every single suit of cards is like a season and it has three picture cards it's like it starts to get really what i realized when just doing it and what i say when i open the show is that like somebody was trying to work something out and no one knows who was doing it or yeah. where it came from, but everybody just kind of generally accepted it and just went forward and we're like, don't know where it came from, but this is just how shit is. And I love that so much because it, it adds this, I opened the whole thing up. That's the mystery. Nobody knows where the hell it came from. Can't even tell you what country of origin, nothing. Like nothing. They just been well, like, been for like I mean, over a thousand years. Like, I don't know. We've been playing games as long as humans have existed. Uh, I mean, <laughs> like we, every time we find any trace of a civilization, one of the things they find is dice or cards or yeah. board game. I mean, I'm, and obviously I, I'm trying to keep that tradition alive. So Funny story. I actually thought until you put those fucking cards back there, I thought that was like one of those backdrop things. I was oh, like, no, no, this I was is like Ricky just really likes games. And then you put the thing back there. And it was no, like, a magic these, these are stuff. real, real live board games, man. I can touch That's them. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, it's funny. I, I've tried to bring, uh, uh my same punk rock spirit to board gaming and it's been a lot of fun we, uh, yeah we're trying one of these days we'll get you up here i promise you i would love that yeah um, I, you know i've been meaning i got a couple friends that live there uh aside from you now so it's like it's getting increasingly more enticing to go to richmond you know especially when it's not really that far you know no it's it surprises me actually uh when i was driving back down we sold our house in durham and we were driving mm -hmm. back and forth and uh I was like, man, this really isn't that bad. Like, I was doing that drive uh, regularly, so. Right. Uh, yeah, and you know, you've always got a place to stay, man. We've got... I appreciate that. I appreciate um, it. But, uh, yeah, so what's, for you, what's been kind of the, uh, I, you know, we'll we'll finish up here in a couple of minutes, but sure. what's been kind of the uh, craziest thing about this journey for you? Like, where do you look at it and just go wow how how did i end up in this uh the record scratch moment for you i guess yeah uh i don't know if there was a if the moment happens every time like i'm in a situation because you know i grew up really really poor i saw most of these people on television or yeah. mtp or um something and you know even even when we met originally i wasn't like that like what i am now so no, was, you were uh i think working uh research or yeah uh, i still do i still yeah, do that yeah. yeah i run a whole entire research firm now but like yeah. you know i love my science uh, yeah probably why i'm so analytical and critical of stuff. <laughs> it's like it's good because i'm a scientist yeah um, but i you know who says there, science and magic can't coexist right they do in one person so you know one of the one of the thing is is uh i had heard one time somebody said that it was um uh, magic is what they call science before they figure out how yeah. it works right yeah. and so you know before i before they figured out how the sun works that was just magic that it was held up in the sky you know or whatever yeah. you know yeah, like, yeah. figure it out and then that becomes less magical and we live in a world that's increasingly less magical which i think in some ways makes what i do as an art more valuable because yeah. it's so arcane it's so clandestine yeah it's so like this weird thing that everybody's heard of but nobody gets to see anymore yeah you know and yeah. uh i or get to be it's chris angel right that's the, that's the <laughs> mind yeah 
you know, I mean, you know, more power to them. There's there's yeah. room for we magic too, right? Like yeah. That's just a whole different form of it, yeah. I guess. You know, uh, my my plan isn't to reach audiences. I think it's more to um, make people feel different about the world, um, and maybe like let go a little bit that we don't really know anything, and it's okay to not to. Yeah. You know, um, and so, you know, I, I put in a lot of effort to do that. But yeah, you know, being poor growing up, I was just talking with a person last night in Durham. They asked about the uh, first magic trick I ever saw was a guy named Michael Costa was this kid to stop me from getting bullied when we were like eight years old. Um, and he just called me his best friend, even though we had not really met officially. He just stopped this kid from beating me up my ass. Um and Michael Costa and I became really good friends and he showed me my first magic trick and the motherfucker came out and he had this little tiny scarf and he just takes it and he just sticks it, his fingers on his little thing and he goes, shoot, and it was gone. And 12 year old me, I still think about it. I was like, what? Like that where, where you believe in that shit. I'm like, where? Like I have. How did like, you do this? He ran away. I literally had to chase him around yeah. the neighborhood because he just kept running he wouldn't show he was so afraid to like reveal the secret because he yeah. didn't want to and um i didn't i didn't know how it worked you know um so that always stuck in my head and, and when i went on tour with the front bottoms uh and thin lips back in 26 no 2015 maybe um we were in charleston at the music farm and i invited michael costa and his family and i gave the story about how not only did he stop me from getting bullied uh with no you know skin in the game to be my friend but he also showed me my first doing this show in front of all these like you know sold out show and <laughs> he gets to be here to watch it how uh who's well, magic he... now michael cost oh i'm sorry to hear that uh what what oh, was no. his reaction when you told him that uh, about the story yeah oh i didn't tell him and he just found out about it on stage when i walked out oh oh it was kind of a surprise for everybody you know and he's such a he's such a good dude and like we grew up poor together you know so now when i do the things that i do and in the space that i occupy um i feel like an imposter and i feel like i don't belong there because you know socioeconomic or you know uh, hard upbringings <laughs> yeah you know, you're like, I don't belong here. And then like, sometimes I got to stop myself and be like, no, I, I, I got here by myself. Like yeah. no one helped me get here. It was just me being persistent in the face of all those people that were like, no, nah, man, that's a dumb idea. I don't know who yeah. would ever watch magic or do magic. At a... I mean, magicians were that way too. They were like, man, this is the dumbest idea. Now everybody's trying to jump up on the game, but they're, you know, 20 years behind. Well, I, I, I was <laughs> talking with uh, Eric, Dylan, and Aaron, dollar signs oh yeah yeah i love those guys and uh you know one of the things that i realized that i just think every time i talk with anybody who's an, an artist and mm -hmm. thankfully i have a lot of artists in my life yeah you do uh, is uh just how much work it is and people just i like you know i think that gets lost anybody who's working on a craft is yeah you know you've been doing this for 27 years you've been, you've got you've got a, a 21 you have a full grown adult child full grown right? adult absolutely that, that is younger <laughs> than the, the time you've been working on your craft and uh, you know, she's as, she's the age i started my craft right yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. like uh, and, and i think that's one of those things where uh, there is it's funny when you just the idea of, the, of an overnight sensation. I'm like, there, there, there's either rich people or people who put in a ton of work. There's no <laughs> overnight sensations. Uh, it yeah. is, it is hard work to get where. And, and hey, I'm, I'm so. I mean, I'm proud of you, man. Uh, like I see it for what that's worth, right? Just thank it's, you. It, it's awesome to get to see there. And one of the things I appreciate. Uh, I'm so fortunate with people like you in my life that do go, uh, you know, steal a little death cab, right? Such great heights uh, <laughs> um, is, is, you know, the that we've maintained uh, a kinship for yeah. over a decade because, uh, you know, sometimes it, uh, you know it and I know it. Some people get there and they forget where they came from. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, you watched me at the beginning. So, like, everybody who was there at the beginning, I, I, no, you, you were there with me. Or, like, you know what I mean? You Somebody that was trying to, like, get in my way because, you know, uh, 
you know, because sometimes people can hold their them, their friends back. Yeah. And be like, oh man, you know, this, that, and the other, and like not really supportive or oh, I'll go to the show and then just never come to a show. Yeah. I found that out when I did the Cheryl Crow thing. And I just got so many messages from people going, we always believed in you. I'm like, bitch, you never came to my show. You yeah. know, they're asking me for yeah. a show. And I'm like, I've been doing shows around here for years and yeah. no one came to them. You know, like maybe like uh, you know, some of the magic Mondays or something. But you know, I got to open for future islands at the cave before they were a thing. You know, yeah. just dumb things that just don't make any sense. And it's like, but that's the time I put in and it doesn't feel real. Yeah. No. Well, you know, the I think there's a, a whole host of people that do support bands. That's how we're artists, actually yeah. artists uh, early on. And, uh, you know, I, I just wish more people would do that because do. it's like you said, with shovels and rope, right? <laughs> there were six people in the room. You could have yeah. been the seventh. You could have been the seventh. And, like, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I even if, uh, I think that's something that we can do more of is just support our friends, right? If we do that. I, I say be present. It ain't even, <laughs> even just, it's just like seeing your face at a show just makes the person's day that you gave a shit enough to yeah. even come out. Even if you don't like what they fucking do, just that you turned up, you know? Yeah. And, and you don't have to come to every show. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But you know, right. like, you know, that's how we get on. I, my new, my new supportive move is, uh, you might like this. Uh, when I go and I see a band multiple times a year, I buy the same record over and over again, if I like it. And then I keep it to give copies away on people's oh, birthday. Oh, that is so awesome. Like, basically, I'm building a record collection at the same time I'm building a gift collection. That is awesome. Most of my friends are, are musicians or they like yeah. music. Currently, I have, uh, you know, four of Adine the Artist records. I've got um, several copies of uh, uh, Menzingers, like all of them, you know, because every time I'd see them, yeah. I just buy a new yeah. one. You know, you know, they've guest listed me or whatever. Then I just go over to merch and I just buy a bunch of stuff. And it's like, I know this goes in your pocket. So I, that's how yeah. you know, the ticket doesn't yeah. go in your pocket, but the merch does, right? Uh, well, hey, uh, I'm going to put a pause in there. Uh, we'll, sure. uh, we'll come back. We're going to take a quick break and then come right back. Uh, I'm back with Mike Casey, and uh, and you were uh, sorry we had to take a quick break, but you were talking about uh, uh, buying records and and giving. Them oh yeah, things. gifting them. That's like my new way to support artists because yeah. like like you have a lot of friends that'll be like, ah, oh, you didn't tell me about this band or why didn't yeah. you know? It's like, well, you know, okay. So now I've taken on myself to support bands and support my friends and who like music by buying extra copies of records and if i go to a birthday party especially of someone i'm only like kind of either a friend or a mild acquaintance of and i get yeah. in, enough to get invited to the party i'll be like you know what i think they would like this band and i'll just brand new record you know yeah. uh, and i and i and you give it away and it's i think it's a very thoughtful gift especially from a music uh person yeah i i you know what i've always if somebody takes the time to recommend a band to me i'm going to check them out yeah and even if i don't like it and and it's like one of the things uh if somebody hey yeah i think you might like this band unless it's a band i'm like oh i already know i don't like that band like i've uh because we also listen to a lot of bands you know <laughs> So right. I yeah. was like, oh, sorry, don't like that band. Uh, no, and you know, the more bands you listen to, the more you run up on like certain people, like certain ones, and then also like you and I can like meet in the middle. And yeah, we both love, like these bands, but you hate like the mm -hmm. Wonder and I love them or something. Yeah. You know, and, like people go, man, can't do that band. Yeah. I can't do that, and it's like it's kind of cool because you just see where everybody's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. territoriality is of their music right it's like i like emo but not that emo or i like punk. Yeah. I, I, my line is super like thrashy punk could not it, it could all just go away and i'd be so happy but i cannot stand it um uh, it's not i'm a melodic pop punk emo kind of guy there's a uh there's a band i actually just heard uh called they're from sweden um feels like heaven oh that sounds awesome uh, and they they're like Revelation Summer, like melodic hardcore. So uh, that's like uh, what was that? There's that band, F like Fireworks or something that just. Came oh out? yeah, yeah, I've heard Fireworks. Um, I, their new record is really good, <laughs> and like I had never heard of them before, but everybody was kind of like popping off on them, you know. Yeah, yeah, they've been blowing up. I uh, um, I was actually I saw Oso Oso, um, oh, in nice. Atlanta, 
um, and I was hanging out with Jade after the show, and there was a, a, a woman there, and she kept like trying to find bands that we had in common. And I was like, "We have Oh So So in common. That's yeah. probably going to be it. I don't like most of the other bands that they're like in their right. scene. Like that's just not my thing. Uh, but I do love well, the, the bands so. in Oh So Oh So scene because didn't they go out with the men singers too? I they think? did. It, uh, but I meant more like uh, the like younger uh, Home Is Where and. I like the younger emo bands. Uh, they they actually they took Anxious out, who's uh, like a oh. straight edge hardcore band, but they're more like they sound more Blink One Eight Two ish, I guess to me. Okay. Uh, but I love them. Uh, Same. Uh, so um, interesting. Yeah, any of those words you just said, I have no idea who they are. I'm like, okay, well, that's way out of my wheelhouse. Yeah, but... it's it's like. Uh, Gen Z uh, emo, I think, like they're seeing, and and I do like. I think Oso is in that scene, and I love them. And there's other bands in there I like too, but uh, a lot of it just. Uh, uh, you probably know, like, um, I mean, it's all the bands that sprung out after Joyce Manor, like the Joyce Manor uh, tree. I love Joyce Manor, though. Like it's Prince Daddy and the Hyena, you probably know them. Yeah, yeah, they're good. Uh, like Hotel that. Years, uh, they're a little bit older, they're but good. some of those. I'm trying to think of, and I, okay. I, I do like some of those bands. I, I love. I mean, Corey's awesome uh, from Prince Daddy. Uh, Okay. But uh, 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 and the the hotel your guys are great. Um, yeah, they're but, from Philly, right? So uh, I think they're from Massachusetts, actually. Oh, Massachusetts! Uh, uh, the only good thing to come out of Massachusetts. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Uh, uh, but uh, just kidding. I just I have a I have a love hate relationship with New England. So that's fair. That's I played one of the best shows of my life in uh, in Alston, Massachusetts. So like right outside Boston. So. Oh, um, good on you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, uh, I hated my Boston show because people were so rude. I know, uh, it's like, uh, Gary, I'm trying to give you a pass, Boston. It was a show, and then you're just rude and loud and obnoxious, and oh, it was not. It was not fun. Well, I think we're I yelled gonna... somebody because they said uh, they yelled something about Donald Trump, and I had stopped oh, my no. show, and I was like, "Look, man." Um, if that's what you believe, I'll fucking give you your money back and you can just leave this fucking mm -hmm. show. I was like, there's nobody on this tour that believes that. And if you just want to sit here and be disruptive with Yeah, be that jerk. Shit, yeah. Then we're going to have a problem. So yeah. just shut your fucking hole. Um, that kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do something more fun. Um, yes. Absolutely. This is our uh, so this one I normally I do these off the top of my head. I could not do this one off the top of my head. Uh, so I, I cheated a little bit. And and I have a uh -huh. pre-written top ten, uh, but we're doing our top ten uh, pinball machines, right? Yes. That's, all pinball right. Tables. You're a game guy, so yeah, this actually, I am. So. I and and I do uh, my uh, a little backstory here. It's it's funny that you picked that because my dad is not a, a gamer, like an arcade gamer. Uh, and obviously, when we grew up, right, arcades were still very much a thing. Oh yeah, a thing. thing. Uh, but my dad loves pinball machines. So when I was a kid, that's a memory I have with my dad is is playing pinball. So uh, I do actually have um, – most of mine are going to be older. <laughs> uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, and, and I, I cheated on most of, most of mine will probably be newer. I just started playing pinball in May. Oh, all right. And it was uh, – do you remember the backsliders here in, in Raleigh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Chip Robinson, the, the front man, you know, he's old. He's like 65 now. And we hang out a lot. Uh, I've been hanging out a lot for the last years, but got really close in post my breakup, you know. And uh, he bought us uh, Nick Cave tickets uh, on Nick Cave's first stop on his first tour in America in like eight years. Was wow. Enough. So we went to this, this Nick Cave show and, and drove up and then, the next day, we, after we had this beautiful, amazing church-like experience, uh, the art, the, the pinball museum was right around the corner from our hotel. So, like, let's go. Well, we had to wait till two, so we we still went. We played for a couple hours, and it was awesome to see Chip because he's like, yeah, he's like sixty-five, so he's like, t t he's like, I played this game in Lillington at a gas station, and you yeah. know, you're reading the history that they're like, you know, they only made like two thousand of them, right? Mm -hmm. There couldn't have been that many in every state. Especially if they're lopsided by population, like Chicago, yeah. New York, and stuff. Yeah. And so we played all these machines, and then we played this Godzilla machine, which is uh, really great. And then uh, we left, and at one point, maybe like come 
probably about this time last year we were you know kind of going outside drinking it was like man there's gotta this is boring like it's fine i love seeing you but let's do something and he was like well they got pinball machines at these arcades in raleigh and i was like yeah we had such a great day that day yeah so probably about may of last year we started going and we haven't stopped. So now I've got like this renegade pinball crew I run around with. <laughs> I've gotten everybody like involved in pinball. And it goes with that whole life. Right. Because like to me, pinball is like, um, it's analog, right? Yeah. yeah. It's it's not algorithmically driven at no. all. And no. uh, it's it's all physics. And, and, it, and at any one given moment, it's you controlling this chaos and this ball and you could bat it around and it goes crazy and it can be great or it goes crazy and it goes down the drain. It's like, for me, that's like the two ways people go through life. They're very yeah. intentional and they try to like hit their shot a couple yeah. times or they just go through and just make a fucking mess and it goes down the drain and maybe sometimes it works. Um, so I, it is a very meditative exercise for me. I'm about the calmest pinball player you've ever seen. Oh man. With exactly. my friend and I. I cross my feet. There's no hitting. I don't hit the machine. It's no, just all right. So no, no tilting. Uh, we're not trying to. All right. Uh, that's great. Um, tilt. I've never gotten a tilt machine. Wow. I can't say yeah, that. Yeah, so I, I never got a tilt. Yeah, so like I just don't get really bent out of shape, and it's funny to watch people get bent out of shape on it and like and i and i go i kind of look at them and not in judgment but like in like this like dude if you died tomorrow no one cares that you came in third on this yeah issue. like it's, no one cares it's a game like, it's just a game like you should just it enjoy it for the moment that it is and then my friends get mad they'll be like oh why are you buying all the pinball games i'm like dude i can buy you all a round of drinks or i, I can buy you all everybody a round of pinball and the round of pinball would cost me one of y'all's drinks you know yeah. <laughs> like yeah. It's a really weird concept that it's like this game that you're inviting people to play. It only costs a dollar. But if I was yeah. to buy them all a drink at four people, that'd be forty dollars versus yeah. dollars, right? Yeah. But to me, it's a great, it's a perfect, it's a perfect uh time sink for me. So I love it. So That's do we start at the bottom? Yeah, we do. we do. Hit me with your number 10. What's your number 10 pin? Oh, uh, so my number 10. Uh, and I've played it a few times. I played it in DC recently and I played it in now. I now I like look for pinball machine or not look for specific ones, but look for places to go. Yeah, play them. yeah. Any place that has more than five machines, I'm going. Um, there's this one called Cactus Canyon, and it's like it's from the 80s. It's kind of yeah. cool, just yeah. digital shit. And uh, you know, every time you pull a thing, it's got this little like it's got all the like traditional like mine shaft and uh, outlaw yep. duels and yep. track yeah. and shit and uh after you do like a thing where you where you shoot it into this canyon and hit this stupid like outlaw guy then you get into a quick draw and the ball comes out and these targets pop up like little yeah. tools. and then you have to hit the one that stays up yeah you know, for your or whatever man i really got off on that game it was so it was so great um so cactus canyon it's and yeah. they've re it and re-released it now so i've seen it a lot more around i think i um I I cheated with my number ten. Uh, it's two, but neither one of them are actual pinball machines, so I think it's okay. okay. Uh, one was 3D pinball that used to be on PCs. Uh, oh my god, yes! And the other is Sonic Spinball, which is a Sonic the Hedgehog pinball oh, game. For I remember them. Uh, and uh, the, the I they were just. I can tell you I spent many, many hours on both of those games, uh, pinballing Sonic and uh That's that's not cheating. Yeah. Well that's good. not cheating though. I think that's good. smart. Like I mean, I, I've noticed a lot of the guys that are younger than me that play now get pinball emulators for their phone and they like yeah. study game cabinets and then try to find the game cabinet and apply the play to it. Wow. wow. Yeah, I mean it, it is really technical. It's very strange. Um I don't do that. I'm just I'm a very in the moment person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me me too. I, I I don't know that I could dedicate that much time to researching pinball, but yeah, me God either. bless the people who can. <laughs> Yeah, not me, man. Not me. Well, you know, it's really funny. I realized that uh, I would say a majority of pinball machines, not all of them, but they all either revolve around a TV show or a movie, yeah, a band or or some kind of musical thing, or um, was that only the two? Yeah, I think that's it. Like they're all really games, TVs, movies, yeah, 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's there is off chance that few, but if you walk into any pinball arcade, a majority of the games are based on something like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, existing property, uh, intellectual property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they got a new one coming out. It's a it's Pulp Fiction. I can't wait to play it. It's oh, that'll fiction. be <laughs> that'll be. Uh, I can't wait for the. Uh, uh, what is it when they uh, the shout outs or the call outs or whatever the oh um, the speaking thing yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah <I don't> <laughs> Uh, so with that, let's see my number nine is uh i played this in philly and i've only played it in philly once it was the uh halloween machine oh and nice had, um scenes from halloween and it was a multi-level playing field and it, you only played like in 75 percent of it because the other like 25 percent of it when you hit the ball up the thing you actually went through a house and there were other flippers up in here and you had to like kind of hit like spinners and things but if you missed it then it would go into a different part of the house and you were supposed to run and hide you know and then it would come back down but when it comes back down it comes down this long hedge like this and each time it comes down the hedge mike a little uh, plastic michael myers kind of bops out looks at you and just gets closer each time <laughs> And uh, the only pinball machine I ever had that has a jump scare. You hit it in like one part of uh -huh. uh, uh, the game, and then without any warning or like it just appears next to the left flipper. Even though you hit it like way over here, it just kind of comes out. And, and like uh, you get used to it, you it's a jump scare for you. You're like, whoa, how did the ball get there? Like I literally just hit it there, and it's quiet. It's not like it goes beep 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 here comes the ball it yeah. just sort of comes out of there and you're like Whoa. oh man <laughs> that's great uh oh my Sorry. my number nine is uh an older one um like i said most of mine are gonna be this one i think came out uh early 90s or 90 uh it's a uh, fun house it's the like the circus one i don't know if you've ever played it uh i have seen it uh that was uh, um i think it was either roses or kmart uh, they used to have arcade cabinets and in the, in the front. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. they had that. They, so that's one of the very first. Like when I would go with shopping with my mom, they had that at one of the uh, the you know super stores of the. Hell like, yeah! Uh, so I used to play Fun House uh, while I waited for my mom to finish her shopping. So that's uh, yeah. one of my first. You know the funny thing? I never played pinball as a kid, really. Huh. I was, I was aware that it existed and I was aware that I, I just didn't get it. It's really weird. I don't know why. I think I like it now because it's a harken back, you know, like I said, analog and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, my number eight is one that a lot of people love and uh, it's called Attack on Mars. Um, and it's a. The Tim Burton. I movie. thought for my entire existence that it was Mars Attacks and it was based on the movie, but it's not based on. Oh, the movie. yeah. I know. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's got a little spaceship. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my uh, brain went to Mars Attacks immediately too, and then you said that. Yeah. I was like, nope. I know exactly what you're talking about. They made yeah, a board game out of that. Did they really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> about yeah, Attack on Mars. It's cool. Like, there's a bunch of really cool. It's a very simple machine. It plays really nice. I like that. Um, and then, like, you know, once you do, do destroy the shield, the thing comes down. And you have to hit inside this weird trapping for a while. And then once you hit all the things, it opens up a, a scoop and you shoot it. And the ball goes in. The saucer just shakes and it's destroyed the saucer. You get a lot of points. I think this thing, like, gets into the billions of points, you know. But um, that's a fun one to play with people that haven't played pinball before. <laughs> yeah. A little bit more forgiving, you know. So I like that one for, for that kind of thing. Um. Yeah, I uh, I have never played that that machine that I can recall, but it definitely I remember. Like I was like, wait a second, I know exactly what you're talking. About. Like the the, it's got like the ray shooting out of the flying saucer, right? And the like, yeah, 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 yeah. There's um, all kind of fun stuff with that one for sure, and it's a fun one. Like it typically is around a lot of places. It's a very common one, so it's a good one. Um, I like my number eight is not a very good game uh i in researching it uh but so it is uh that's why it's so low on here because if any pinball purists find this they'll probably rake <laughs> over the coals for it but it was what i had played uh i think it was at aladdin's castle in winston-salem um, uh back when they had arcades and malls um and it was because i was a huge marvel fan uh it was 1980s amazing spider-man uh which Definitely. I just love it. Like, 
I, it was apparently not very good, but to my childhood brain through nostalgia glasses, it was the coolest one ever. Uh, cause I love Spider-Man and, yeah. uh, um, and I was a kid playing pinball. So, uh, yeah. it, was, it was great. Uh, yeah. You're like, and you know, sometimes they have the little tricky things that move and it has kind of cool things. That's what I like yeah. about it. Now, what is yeah. the game do that's really, really cool? That'll lead me into my number seven, which ironically is 007. The oh, success. nice if you haven't played that one it's brand new all right and i think about yeah every game on up here save a few of them are what they call a uh, stern pinball is a company that makes them yeah now. yeah yeah and so like um they give you a qr code that's licensed to your account and you just scan in on the machine and it keeps track of all your high scores all your achievements on oh the that's awesome you do and then it actually greets you as the player so like so when oh. me and my friends all go you hear it all like logging us we're all logging in on the qr reader and it goes bling 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 and it, yeah it'd be like you know casey magic and, and ricky dicky or whatever you know your your, your name <laughs> is and um so everybody kind of gets to play that way you know and uh so 007 just come out it's based on like a whole bunch of old Sean Connery level uh, 007 movies. Okay. It's terrifyingly hard. Um, they keep updating the code. That's the other thing about these machines that now uh -huh. that they're Wi-Fi, the game can constantly change because they're connected to Wi-Fi so they can download new oh, games wow. into each machine. So you have to update it. But so when the update comes, like it'll open up different parts of the game because they can just reprogram them at any time, which is huh. so smart. Yeah. Um, so James Bond has this big rocket um, and you shoot it and it goes around the rocket and locks in for your multi-ball. But uh, it also has a little ball scoop that is the Aston Martin that has the ejector seat and the ball shoots out of the ejector oh, seat. Oh, that's sick. And then the coolest thing is there's a little tiny Sean Connery about mm, three inches, maybe, maybe two and a half inches. And this, they, they have a jetpack multi-ball from the jetpack and he's flying around the jetpack. And when you lock it in, the ball stops at the top of the machine he flies over and he's got a magnet on his jetpack. He picks it up and he flies it across the table and he waits for you to hit one shot to start the multi ball and then he drops the multi ball on you. Oh man, it's super cool. It is like super duper cool. I I play uh, pinball machines with reckless abandon. I am not a uh, methodical player, so multi ball is one of my favorite things because it's pure chaos. Uh, it is pure chaos. <laughs> it's just like I gotta keep these balls going as long as I can. Uh, love these balls, yeah. No, it's true though. It's like oh, you gotta. I love it. I love it. That that one's really fun. Everybody was really excited about that when it came out. Uh, that that's neat. I'm now I'm gonna like Adrian's gonna be like we gotta go play pinball. So you really uh, should. Uh, we'll do a pinball exchange. There, we'll come to a pin, a barcade up here, and then I'll come down there. Oh man, do not te do not test me. I would love that. I, I know. I will do it. We'll do it. Uh, mine is a series of um, uh, arcade cabinets uh, because I don't really like most of the bands that were in them, uh, but I always <laughs> played them. Uh, it was like hey, Guns N' Roses had one, and Aerosmith had one, and ACDC yeah. had one. Uh, but the the rock and roll pinball machines because uh, uh, they were loud and obnoxious just like me and they would scream yeah. songs at you uh, while you were playing and uh, um, I like I just remember uh, playing <laughs> though, like I hate Aerosmith I I don't hate many oh. bands that is one but I wore that arcade cap that uh, pinball machine out because so. it's so cool it does the thing where it shoots the ball into like this box from this yes. one corner like up into the air and like yeah yeah, it, yeah not a fan of aerosmith and one of the games i have in here i'm a huge not a fan of the band i hate yeah. the band but they rank pretty high on my favorite pinball Is machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah so my number seven is the line of rock and roll uh Mm -hmm. uh pinball machines uh, yeah and some of them were just so simple because i think they felt like they could just put them in like rock and roll bars and it would be cool like they're just gonna get money from having metallic yeah. or whatever but the gameplay was just kind of like mm, trite for lack of a better word i mean all games can you can unlock them yeah. in some way but yeah. you know that was the one thing i had found there's this other game i like for my number six it's creature from the black lagoon if you can oh ever that's a great it. one it's super rad. It's kind of old school. Um, I like it because it has uh, this uh, weird thing where the creature appears in this three-dimensional thing underneath the table when you find it, you know? 
Um, and it just has all these like movie tropes from the fifties. You know, I just love yeah. it's like people being at a drive-in movie and like all these like yeah. really silly graphics. So, um, but it plays really smooth. Like gameplay now, as I progress as a player, it becomes a very important thing. Like, am I having fun hitting the shots? Are they hard? That's why James Bond's so low. It's actually a really hard machine. <laughs> the gameplay is okay, but it's no creature from the Black Lagoon. Yeah, I, I can actually, uh, one of the things that for me in translating to board games is elegance and design. Like, how much fun is it just to take your actions? Like, to me, if playing the game, no matter how much I enjoy parts of it, if it's not fun to do what I'm doing. Why are we doing it? Like, why am I wasting my time on this game that's like, but if the game's fun, who cares if you win or lose? You're having fun just playing. That's what's yeah, more important to me. Exactly. And if you can like the thing, way, way better. Yeah, that, that's what pushes it up to your favorites, right? Exactly. Um, um, well, my number six is the newest one for me uh, on my list. I'm pretty sure um, it is one I played. Um, I don't remember if I played it in Durham. I think that might have been in Durham at the um, – the station or whatever the or the barcade there was, but I I feel I know I played it at that time in my life for the first time, and I played it. Oh, uh, anytime I played it since. Um, not state uh, whatever the place was over uh, the barcade that had uh, arcade games and uh, oh the social social that's what it was the social. Um, it's the X Men uh, arcade cabinet. The the oh one hell yeah. Uh, I think there's a Wolverine and a Magneto one. I've only played the Wolverine one, but uh, X Men is my favorite comic book property by far, hands down. I love it. Uh, and uh, I remember it was very Wolverine focused, the one I played. Uh, like, uh, I think Wolverine pops out on it, but uh, uh it just um, lots of history of the the x-men is happening when you're playing that game and um, it's one where i was like oh uh, this is this is like my fandom in a pinball machine yeah. and they do kind of tell stories so uh, oh yeah they absolutely do and i think like yeah who doesn't love wolverine you know you know I, really funny uh quick aside if you've ever seen pete holmes do the x-men where he fires all the x-men in their performance reviews i don't know if i have seen that. just do Pete Holmes, X Men. I'll check it, it out. He literally plays Professor X and and fires every single one of them for very sometimes rational or irrational decisions. But the, there's other people that are playing like, uh, you know, uh, Gambit or whatever, oh, and he's a total shitbag to them during this exit interview. And uh, Wolverine is one of my favorite ones that he I'm does. gonna check that out. I. I, Pete Holmes, uh, I don't know, his comedy never really – I watched that crashing show he had. Yeah. Uh, he never really connected with me, but uh, I yeah, that's in my lane, so I'm going to go check it out. Uh, oh, I mean, I think you would realize what a big, huge X-Men nerdy was. Yeah, he yeah. It might change my uh, all, perspective of him. So um, All of the X-Men, he fires them all, Wolverine, one at a time, and then just he's just shitting on them the entire time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I would love that. Cool. I would love that. Uh, uh, yeah, you would like it. Start with Wolverine, though. It's. it's I will. Cool. I will. Um, where was it? Uh, oh, number five. Number, number five, five. Top five. We're in the top five. Medieval Madness. Hard All to right. beat game. Super sick game. Actually, voice with Tina Fey and I want to say somebody else famous. Do the voices like from the '90s, back before they were famous. You know, it's got that castle in it, and you have to shoot across yep. the moat, and the castle shakes apart and falls apart. And there's like a lot of stuff happening in that one. Um, and it's, it's impressive so, to look at too. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. You just feel like hell. Yeah. It feels like yeah. maybe like like if if um, Ash from the Evil Dead Two didn't like make it to the medieval time. Like it just looks like it's got that kind of like yeah. Like, yeah, yeah it, it's fun uh that is a uh that that might show up uh, on my list so maybe maybe it does maybe yeah <laughs> um, uh well my number five is um uh you the universal monster uh movie one the monster bash um, oh yeah with uh where they're where they're doing a a, a rock and roll show yes uh, plays the keys and yes. that is a really good one that is a good one uh I, it is fun it's ridiculous uh and it is uh musical uh which you know obviously 
appeals to me. And uh, I mean, it's just uh, um, it, and that's a ridiculously good. Uh, I, I like the ones that kind of play with the format or a little bit different than the because I do agree with you. I feel like a lot of these, I'm just like. I'm playing a licensed game pinball machine. Uh, and, and sometimes they incorporate it well. And sometimes it's pasted on. But uh, that was yeah, just that one, You got Dracula flies out of the thing and you have to hit him like six times to win him or whatever. Yeah. Frankenstein, you have to hit him a bunch and it opens up a multi ball and the mummy. And you got like werewolf and the creature from the Black Lagoons in it yep. making second appearance. Um, yeah. <laughs> my friends really love that machine. I don't particularly like it. Because the ball save isn't very long, and sometimes it gets a little tricky uh, when when the auto ejects the ball or something, or like yeah. something weird. Um, so it's an older table. So if it's a little bit off balance, it can it can be very frustrating to play. And I watch That's, people beat that machine to to death sometimes. That was uh, that was when I played a ton um, uh, as a kid. So I have a lot of uh, that was just one I remember. Uh, I love Universal uh the monster movie the universal monsters anyway yeah um, yeah and uh it was just such a fun like all, most of the ones from here on out are ones i just remember playing a ton when i was a kid <laughs> so oh, uh, sure, sure, sure. uh that was one well, of my I think, favorites i think my next one would would be if you had ever played it in your top five for sure but my number four and it's the first appearance i have no idea there's this guy named keith elwin and uh, he used to be a pinball player turned designer for Stern. And he made a machine called Iron Maiden. Oh, nice. It is such a fucking cool game. You get to pick one of like 16 Iron Maiden songs. I okay. always pick Number of the Beast. And then um, it's got sarcophaguses and eddies and shit. And it's That's like fantastic. a bunch of really weird shit. It's got like a launch ramp that you have to hit the sarcophagus to open it up and shoot a ball in. It starts multi-ball. A lot of airplane shit, World War II shit, and like old war shit. And yeah, like a lot of video of like Eddie being a winged monster with a flamethrower and the multi-ball. I mean, it's fucking cool. And it's got some really hard shots. But... You get to hear Iron Maiden, you get to fucking see a cool ass machine, and then yeah. there you I uh oh well, yeah, I actually one of my favorite songs to uh uh just play around with is the Trooper. So uh, oh yeah, I, that's on there too. Yeah, yeah I love I love that song. So uh well uh my number four uh is um cool uh not as cool as Iron Maiden to me uh but uh, I just remember uh you have unlock and what is it you've unlocked this door with the key to your imagination something along those was the twilight zone uh, oh that's a good one uh it's a fun it was fun to play uh yeah. and it like it had great sound effects <laughs> like i remember it, it felt like i was playing in an episode of the twilight zone when i played that uh and it's so interestingly strange like it's really 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 cool um yeah i've played that one a couple times i like it a lot and it's very similar to the x-files machine Hopefully I'm not spoiling it for you, but oh, they're very, yeah. very similar play, uh, or maybe even by the same company. They're like, "Hey, let's do all the weird pinball machines on." Yeah, the you know. See, there you go. They're both TV show shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, most of the mine are TVs or movies from here on out. So. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, I, oh that was the other one was comic books. That was the yeah, other one. Yeah. Um, and speaking of comic books, my number three is uh the Avengers. They like made a comic book driven machine of the avengers it is also by keith elwin i was okay. playing it one day in the top pinball player in the state let alone probably one of the top in the country sees me playing but i don't associate with pinball players because i'm a snob like that i don't yeah, like nice <laughs> but i play good so they see me playing all the time and the guy goes hey man you're an elwin horde i was like what are you talking about he's like and that's how i found out he was like I only see you play this guy's machines. And I'm like, I don't know anything about the designers. I just know I really like playing these machines. And this guy apparently gets me. So yeah. like, <laughs> unconsciously only playing his machines, it's because I get him maybe, yeah. right? So <laughs> Avengers is awesome. It has a loop-to-loop -loop for Captain Marvel where you actually have to hit the ball so hard it goes upside down over and out and comes oh, like, wow. through, a, through a cage. There's a shot that goes up into a tower. And what's really cool about it is there's a spinner like 
it's like it looks like a crank like a hand crank mm -hmm. and depending on what position it's in you have to hit it but when you hit it enough times it opens up the doctor strange portal and the and it comes up out of the table and it glows and you have to hit it into the portal to start the mission and when you do you pick and you do a battle and all the shots light up and it is fucking awesome i've played the shit out of that machine it's a uh, baxter in chapel hill i play all right machine love it to death also a keith elwin machine <laughs> and it's so cool and it's so fun to play and it's so forgiving so i like it um that sounds awesome actually <laughs> i would love to uh uh play and just kind of see the evolution of pinball uh oh yeah I, I don't uh i loved arcades growing up we've gone into them a couple of times but it's adrian doesn't really i think she's coming around to them so uh that'll that'll be the way we get her all on board all right we're, we're i'm sorry our pinball exchange. Uh, my number three, um, the thing I remember most from it was the T-Rex would swallow the ball. Uh, it Jurassic was Jurassic Park. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I love that game too, actually. Uh, I just, uh, to me, that was so cool. Uh, and it, uh, Jurassic Park it was one of my favorite movies. Uh, and it was obviously... Uh, it, I think they integrated the theme very well into the game from what I remember, obviously. Oh, sure. uh, um, and I just like the T-Rex swallowing the ball is just one of those things that. Uh, yeah, because uh, it comes down and it opens its mouth and then yeah. uh, you, you shoot the ball in the mouth and it picks it up and shakes it and then works over here and then drops it in this upper ramp. It's still yep. great. It starts the multi-ball and yeah. it's like, wow, this is so fucking cool. Uh, the one in the one in Raleigh, they turned the T Rex off. I think it kind of broke. So, but it wasn't crucial to the game, right? Yeah. Um, just like, I mean, for me, it was. But <laughs> I mean, just... it was for me too. I was like, yeah. what the hell is going on with the T Rex? I ain't eating the ball no more. Because that, to me, that was a trigger for to know when to shoot at the fucking T Rex. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. shooting this, you know, that's awesome. I love that one. Yeah, I I still play that one to this day, um, and I do love it. But yeah, it was hard to pick ten. By the way. Uh, <laughs> but that's also a stern machine so, yeah um speaking of stern and a band i fucking cannot stand except for one song uh is tom sawyer is the oh, rush, rush. they have a rush machine and it is the coolest one of the coolest most fun pinballs to play like the shots are cool the ball does cool shit uh, you got a time machine, you got to hit it through the fucking time machine and it turns <laughs> time back. There's a fucking clock. There's all kind of multi balls that are based on the songs and then like fly by night multi ball that just fucking goes in the fly by night. I don't even know that song. It's yeah. Just, like, I, 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 know, I know Tom Sawyer. Uh, yeah, same. Uh, I only yeah. know Tom Sawyer. Well, there's a Tom Sawyer one too, you know. I'm sure. <laughs> And it was really funny because it was one of the first stern machines I broke a billion points on playing one time. And my friends, I was just like, I kept going, hey, guys, you guys got to play this machine. It plays really nice. And they're like, I don't like Rush. I'm like, yeah, I don't like Rush either. But if you play the machine, just try it out. So we start playing this machine. And I actually started getting better, but they're getting better. We're all getting better at the same time because we're kind of yeah, know, yeah building it. off each other. Yeah. The next thing I know, I broke a billion. I almost got like one of the top three scores. I, I was missed it by like a uh, hundred thousand. Oh man, that's awesome! Yeah, that's it was awesome. it was really rad. I felt like I need to never play pinball again for the rest of the night. Like I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm out. You know, my dad can be very happy that I did uh, the rush machine. So what's your uh, number two? Uh, has already been mentioned. Um, and uh, the one thing you didn't talk about that I loved was. Um, the uh castle drawbridge so my number two is uh medieval madness medieval madness okay yeah. well hell, go and do your number one then and i'll yeah. oh yeah i will i'll go i'll knock out my number one my number one uh i just remember uh, i had the call out it's showtime uh it was 1992 adam's family machines so. oh dude that is such a sought after machine for pinball players and I, I like it it's fun it's a lot of fun but man there are people that have an allegiance to that machine if you ask them with, without even hesitation be like what's your favorite pin they're like adam's family it, <laughs> like, it for me, I, I, I played it uh that me and my dad probably played that a hundred plus times so that was like that was the pinball machine i played you like that one too yeah that was awesome. it was uh, they they had it in a lot of places around me and I love the Adams family, uh, yeah. so and I just uh, uh, I love that kind of uh, dark but not 
too dark aesthetic, you know, like humorous. Dark, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, kind of like Elvira. Yeah, or, I love uh, Elvira too. I uh, sometimes the uh, the Tim Burton gets a little too uh, serious well, for me, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but uh, but no, Adam Family. I loved it. Loved the pinball machine, and I uh, I just the the Showtime uh, call out. Uh, oh, and it's it's it. really just kind of cool. It is a yeah. like I love um, if if and now that we've talked it out, maybe if I was you, I would look up uh, the walkthrough uh, or the making of the Pulp Fiction pinbox. They talk about designing it from the ground up and all the aesthetics that they put in and why they put them in and yeah. what they're capture and like they have those for a lot of machines and it's really interesting to kind of watch like this designer go hey i made this really fun game and what you didn't understand is the, you know the hand comes out but we had to have it triggered by this and they get into this like kind of like really cool not yeah. too, but really interesting uh stuff my number one machine of yes. all time hands down bar none god zilla yeah. also by keith elwin all right. Um, well, I, I saw a lot of good things about this one. It hit me yeah. with it. I, I, Dude, I've got a new appreciation. So fucking nuts. It's got so many cool things. Like you hit uh, you hit it through the building enough times and the building collapses and it crumbles and that becomes your multi-ball holder. Oh, wow. And you hit it into the building. This like uh, le elevator puts the balls on top. You get three balls on top. It crumbles all the way to the floor of the pinball machine and the balls fly out everywhere. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You effectively destroy a building. It also has a uh, it also has a bridge, and the bridge when you hit it shakes and breaks a little bit sometimes, and uh, and then if you hit it enough, the bridge will crack when the ball goes over to crack. Oh my god! The ball. <laughs> then it's got this fucking uh, it's got this little ramp that moves around, spins, but it's a launch ramp like you would used to do in the parking lot, right? Yeah. But it goes to an actual Mecha Godzilla, and if you oh, hit wow. it enough times. The Mecha Godzilla becomes metallicized or like magnetized, and he holds the ball on his belly. It just sticks right on his belly, and it'll activate this Godzilla Mecha Godzilla multi ball. It is absolutely one of the most forgiving. Uh, I will have to. I will have to check that out, uh, Mike. We're uh, running out of time, but man, uh, I will talk to you soon. And thank you for my yeah. new appreciation on pinball. I'll hit you up. We're getting. To, we're doing this. We're doing this. Let's do it. We're doing it. I'm coming to Richmond. I love All you. All right. Guys. It was good talking to you, man. Good to see you.